Now, this is Coffee of the Stunty DM. Uh, this is a Foundry module review video. This video is going to focus on the module DD 5e Helpers. It's gonna, I'm going to run through the features of it and show you in action. So, we'll jump into that now. So, once you've got it installed, you just go, etc. here. We've got DD 5e Helpers. It is probably more on the lines of a quality of life one uh, module again. So you can see we've got cover, so you can designate it by no cover at all, uh, center point, which is the foundry uh, default, or four corners as per DMC, DMG even. Uh, you can put it so that tiles uh, can be factored in and tokens. So this is quite useful if you do things like um, use trees, uh, use tiles to populate trees and terrain into your maps. You can set those um, tiles to be reflected as cover. Um, let's see, the color can be applied to the cover button, which shows it active. And I put mine as a light blue. Keybind, so you can bind it to say that, um, so you can check. Uh, this is set automatic, so. Yeah, so the way this works is um, this part of the module determines cover. Uh, so as you know in 5th edition, uh, different levels of cover give you different bonuses. This will automatically apply those bonuses to them for, for you, which is quite a nice feature. So as a DM you'd have to worry, like, oh, are they behind, are they behind cover? Are they not? Um, so I'm going to leave it as automatic. You can hide it for the DM, so I don't see... Uh, so yeah, so when players see it, they will see, it just says a creature. Um, it tells me, uh, removes any covers at the end of combat. Yeah, so I've had that ticked. Remove targets under 10, and they're all on these modules that do that. Uh, effect scale, that's fine. Uh, adjust templates of 5 grid. So this one, um, I'm going to do lines and circles. What this does, this uh, option here, by default found with Foundry, um, when you drop a template, it doesn't react how it would do in the rules. So obviously in 5e, um, if a template touches a, a square, that square counts as being effective. In Foundry, it doesn't. It doesn't automatically pick it up. I believe it has to be 50% of the um, uh, of the to uh, tile or square even to be covered. So if that's not covered, then it doesn't pick it up. What this does, it expands the templates to fill the whole section. What it does mean is your circular templates become squares rather than circles. A little bit confusing. Um, I quite like it for the lines and cones because uh, it will fill out those properly. So we'll, we'll do that. So now we've got NPC features. So these are really nice ones. Uh, automatic regeneration. That uh, sounds exactly what it is. So with this, um, if you have a creature that has regen as an ability, it detects that. And as the DM, you get a dialogue pop up to say, do you want to, um, are you going to heal? Uh, it's that beginning of the turn to get pop up saying heal yes or no and it picks up how much healing you've set in the text so if you heal if it says like heal by 10 hit points per round then it will pop up and say 10 and it will automatically heal you by 10 it's very really nice uh, and now you got legend reactions so start turn legend reactions are reset and you also get prompts um, so exactly what it says here uh, these are really nice so at the end of um, another creature's turn, if you have legendary actions on a, on a token on the map, it will automatically prompt you and say, do you want to be doing this? Is this the correct thing to be doing? Again, it's a really nice little feature. Uh, layer, act layer action, uh, again, um, prompts you in for layer action initiative count 20, which is really cool. Undead Fortitude saves. Now these I do love. It makes having zombies so much easier. Um, with 5th edition, as you'll probably know, 
as a zombie, the Undead Fortitude um, bonus. The way that works is, if a zombie is killed, or it reduces zero hit points, it actually gets to make a test to see if it stands up. That test is 5. It, the DC, it's a constitution saving throw, and the DC is 5 plus damage taken. Uh, as a DM, that's a pain in the ass to remember every time. If you've got a horde of zombies, you've got to remember, oh, I've got to do this, or if you've got a couple of zombies, like, oh shit, this is the thing that needs to be done. This gives it, does it automatically for you. Almost. You get a pop up instead. So when a zombie's reduced to zero, what happens? It will give you a pop up. Um, now you can have it do automatic uh, quick saves, which I don't like because it doesn't quite do it how I want it. The advanced save is better. On this, you get a dialogue that has a, a line at the top that says, like, uh, damage taken, and it takes this consideration. So you can set the base DC. So if you say a DC should actually be. 10 plus damage taken to make it a harder and that you set it like that and you can set what stops it uh, so radiant damage stops it on this by default and it looks for an item that says undead fortitude so you can add that to other um, two tokens to say this is what all it is but I'll show you that in action um, in a few minutes uh, PC options so one magic It'll also de detect mod magic for you. Um, and you can set how the surges happen. So if you want the surge to happen as per the um, player's handbook, or if you want it to happen more often, or you can add a default to it to make them happen a little bit more varied. And you got a warm magic surge table. Again, you can pull that in. Got the title cast feature. Um, It'll, it'll look for that feature and then you can tell it re to, to recharge on a, recharge on a search uh, and also you can hide the role from the player so you can tell them this is what it is. And then the last bit is combat helpers. Uh, so this top part has a small little HUD that when you click on your token you see like a little bar at the top that has three icons. Uh, these icons show you what's been used. So there's one for reaction, one for action, and one for bonus action. The three main things you can do in combat. Uh, when you take those, one of them is marked off to show. Um, then you can set it on here. So I've set it on the next option here, uh, status effects. So when I use a reaction on someone, it will put a mark on them to show the reaction has been used, uh, and it will automatically remove that the start next turn. Um, any abilities that recharge on D6 such as Dragon Breath, you can have that happen, which is a really nice feature. And you can uh, the, the dice for itself is set on the actual to uh, on the tokens um, feature, but you can have this this automatic do it and it'll do it at the start of turn, end of turn or not at all. And they can hide it, hide it from players. So if you don't want the, the other um, players in the group to see that it has been recharged, you can make sure they can't see it. Uh, the last bit I don't really use, but this is for uh, things like um, permanent wounds. So you can set tables to say that when you take a certain amount of damage or the threshold is hit, you you gain a, you roll on this table and gain this feature. Uh, the saves associated with it and things like that. Quite nice. Some of them might look at using it in a, uh, a future one. So for now, we'll save those. And we'll go to So you can always see I've got combat um, in progress here. So start my stand. So when I, hover, when I hover over him, you can see this here. So this is his reaction, action, and bonus action. And uh, when I use these, these will be marked off. So what I'm going to do. Attack this zombie. Uh, you can see there automatically it detects um, cover. So it is telling me he checked his line of sight. Are they behind cover? Yes or no? And then you, I can choose to apply these bonuses and it will just um, add them to them. But for now, Samai is just going to make an attack. We could do a advantage to make sure I hit him. Hits a zombie. We'll ignore that for now. 
And then he's got a second attack. So this should hopefully kill them a bit and you'll see the pop up. Uh, let's make sure that we hit him. Yeah. Damage. Normal. And here we go, look. So, first of all, I'll remove that because it's overlapped. Sometimes might. Yeah, so Undead Fortitude. So you can see automatically it puts a zombie to dead until this test is made. So the damage of target, uh, I just put in 8 because that's how much damage he took from here. Uh, and then you can say here, so was this a radiant damage or critical hit? If you say radiant damage or crit, what happened is it will just burst in chat so that the zombie died outright and it doesn't do anything. But if I say it's a normal hit, it will now roll. Uh, it's a normal constitution save. Rolls a 21. Zombie gets back up with one hit point. You can see there it posts in the chat to say that zombie survives with the roll, removes the condition, and gives him one hit point. Nice little feature. And what we'll do now is uh, we'll end Starmite's turn. And you see here, legend reactions. So Ilya, this creature over here, has been given some legend reactions and it pops up. Now, it does do it at the end of like um, NPC turns, it's a little bit annoying. So I believe it should be at the end of PC turns. I hope that's so. Um, it's been a while since I've looked into them. But the nice thing is, it shows you what legendary reactions he has. And if you hover, it tells you what they do. So you can look at it and go, okay, I can do this. So, and then, just so we use this. Um, so let's just move him up. Uh, uh, I think she's already gone, so yeah, that's, that's messed there. But if we go next turn, there comes his turn. Um, he shouldn't get that option, but. So yeah. Um, but yeah, things like cover, so if we put in here, behind this wall now, looking at the wall, it's not fully complete, so it's partially there. Let's say Stantmite is going to throw a javelin. You can see here, automatically, it's picked up the fact there is half cover. I want to see if it adds it to his AC. But yes. It's and he's got quite a good roll, but yeah, so it applies it to him so. Not sure if it should have been applied to Ilya. I place it over turn it is. No, I'm not sure if that gives them Oh yeah, you can see there, my part is. So when he rolled his attack roll, so the way they do it is they do a minus to the attack roll. Rather than boosting the AC by plus two or plus five, it automatically uh, just takes off from the roll. So rather than saying they've got a plus two bonus, um, they just minus two for your, for your attack roll. Which, yeah, I can see a way of doing that like that. I would have. You, I do have a condition that I add to AC for a round, but I can see it being done this way. It's effectively the same thing, really. But yeah, that's, that's really most of those features. Um, don't think I've got any more lair actions. Let's see if we can add one to him. So we use lair action. Uh, and not. Let's just say that this is a
Again, you can see that. Put in there for that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use repost. That's what I need to target in for that. Mm. I see so it's the end of his turn. So let's target start mine. So Ilya is going to use the post. And he's going to make an attack. This is him. What should happen? You can see here it's gone, already gone down to say he's got two uses. Should. See, it's, it's regenerated those usage for him. Uh, so, because it's gone past his turn, it now says end of Stout Might's turn. So, it does do it at the end of his turn. So, obviously, the combat tracker there, but it shows you what these, which is quite nice. It, it's a nice um, feature, and yeah, if I show you, Zombie had used his reaction, shows it that, just shows you that the reaction's been used, and you can, you can click on and off it. So, when you use reaction, Burst action. They're just a way of tracking uh, usages of uh, features, which is quite nice. Uh, the other thing I can show you is start my house. Let's show it this way. Uh, where's his track and breath? Breath weapon. Do it means place it there? But you can see it's when you hover over it, it shows you that this template has filled every square. So in core, I believe the top two corners of the template don't get filled, and the bottom two don't because it doesn't fill 50%. Uh, so it's not always going to target everything in range. Whereas here, you can see hovering over it, it shows you all those. Which is quite nice. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it for this um, module. Uh, template. Um, like I say, it's a, a really nice quality of life module. Has a lot of really good features. Uh, I'd highly recommend using it and bringing it into your games. And playing Fifth Ed. Uh, there's also the compatible. Uh, uh, they done an additional um, module to help out with the uh, cover. So you got the cover expansion here. So it's part of the same stuff, but you can specify token size. Not so you can basically say that if a token is tiny, you don't get any kind of cover from it. Um, a three quarters cover. So if they're a large creature. You can give them a token from there, uh, and then I'll see once you hit zero, nothing. Um, yeah, there's just a little bit of additional um, support with cover. Um, yeah, I think that's really about it. Uh, if there's anything you want to see more, please let me know. But I think it's a really nice module. I use it a lot in my games. Has some nice little functionality, and um, it's has better. Uh, thanks all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will see you in my next um, video. Cheers.